welcome to the Fast Fret and Sean Geek podcast. How are you doing, Todd? This daylight savings time is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I was up at, uh, I usually get up at five. I was up at four this morning or kind of four, I guess, right? Is that how that works? Well, it would have been four a couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a podcaster, not a mathematician. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we got uh, we have guests on again. We're we're doing guests again. So uh, we brought a, a, a we we found these two people uh, wandering around the neighborhood, and we decided to ask them to come into uh, our realm and uh, talk some music. So uh, introduce yourselves, guys. Who do who, who um, do we have here? I'm uh, Brian, and that's Jeremy, and uh, I'm the singer, and he's the guitarist for the band Y. Hello. Hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> good day to you, good gentlemen. Day. Uh, so I do have something listed on my list of things to talk about, and one was who can do the best accents. So uh, you've already started off, Brian, so that's awesome. Uh, it was, that was good. I don't think it was good, but all right. <laughs> you start slapsing into Irish, they'll have a problem. Yeah, no kidding. So you're on the T, Brian, just like just like me? Uh, just, a, just a little throw coat T, because um, I'm kind of gearing up for more rehearsals, and I just... Uh, well, just, I just thought tonight, because I've been doing voiceover stuff all day, I thought maybe my voice might be a little bit scratchy. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm i still recovering from um, my years of dome and singing and not singing properly and, and, and doing too many shows and just pushing myself too hard. So I've been, I think I, I, think I got my voice back now. It, it's... I didn't have a voice for, since December. It was just kind of coming, we were rehearsing and everyone just kind of looked at me while we were rehearsing like, it's getting better. <laughs> um, but our our show last was it last Friday at the Tap House, we played with Phantom Head, and that I felt great vocally. I don't think I had any issues. Yeah, that yeah. night did. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, we just lost our camera. It'll probably oh, come back. Oh no! It's coming back. Relax. There it is. There we are. Yeah, that's right. the thing. As a singer, it's um, I I I don't know if I want to sing again. Like when I go out and play again, I don't know if I want to sing again. It's just there's too many things that can go wrong. As a singer, it's just too tough. I go go back to playing. Well, drums. your your instrument is you. Like you, anyone else can play sick. But we, Jeremy yeah. sings and Mandy sings. I understand Eric sings. We just need to get him to sing. Uh, I think he's so busy jumping around his keyboards. Uh, live or a five piece. So as yeah. we write as a three piece. Dave isn't here tonight because he had uh, other commitments that kind of came up and he couldn't move them. So uh, we are percussionless. So. Well, I, I'm glad he's not here because I was just going to fanboy. I'm I'm a drummer and I really oh, like what he does. He would have loved that. He would have <laughs> loved that. He, is, he doesn't get enough fanboying. Although one woman said she wanted to sit in his lap at the last show. <laughs> I said, <laughs> but he's okay. got this look. That might make it hard to play, but alrighty. <laughs> he just yelled, "I want to sit in your lap." Like, I don't think that's how drums of, work. Yeah. So can we, so since he's yeah. since he's not here, can we embarrass the shit out of him or? Um, <laughs> I don't think it's possible. I don't think Dave gets embarrassed. No? Like he does. No. He does. He's really goofy drum. Like every song we do, even if it's a ballad, he'll end it like it's a Led Zeppelin song as a joke. Yeah. And he'll just look at him and goes, "What?" It's like <laughs> he's trying to embarrass himself. He's trying to embarrass time, himself. So. There's no embarrassing him. That's he just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little story. Like Todd and I used to be in a band with our old man. He was the bass player in that band, and I was the drummer and singer. And sometimes they do both or switch or whatever. And if I ever played something on drums he did not like, like one of those Led Zeppelin endings, he did not hesitate to turn around. Doesn't matter if we were live or not, and <laughs> play the fucking song, Sean. You know what? Live, he's time. he's a pro. It's just we're in rehearsal. He's yeah, oh yeah. He's he, he goes into <laughs> he just switches the knob in the back of his head to twit, and so during rehearsal he's in twit mode, and then live he's like rock star mode. He's incredible. Um, like the way you see him in the video for not, uh, uh, Soul Declares, that's yeah. him live. That yeah. We're just kind of like, oh, don't get too close. You might lose an eye or something. He, <laughs> um, he goes all in. So yeah. at the end of the so, show, he's all sweaty and exhausted. And like, What's so those goggles, showering, dude? those goggles on his head. Oh, for that one video? Oh, is yeah. that is that like, are those prescription or? No, that was <laughs> that was just for the video. We're supposed to be as if we're in the post-apocalyptic world. And oh, no, yes. We had all these different things. And he went, I'm wearing those goggles. Like, <laughs> Go to town, buddy. I'm going to just wear a kerchief over my face and some aviators. So you were yeah. kind of going for like a Book of Eli thing with that. Oh, oh yeah. That was the prophet. That was for the prophet, yeah. Prophet, yeah. yeah. That video took like a whole day to shoot. And then I had to do yeah. pickups with an actor with a green screen. And same thing with... um. 
the funny thing, Soul Declares, the video was shot. We had two days to prep for that. It turned out we had to move quick. Wait, two days, like, right? Get everything ready? Like, yeah. Like, literally, we found out Mandy was leaving for, like, 12 days, and the single was dropping December 1st, and we are doing a show December 1st. So she's going to be gone for 12 days, be back in time for the show. And I thought, there's no way I can get this video cut and together and get the single. I need it done now. I've got to shoot it, like, when? And I thought, well, we've got to shoot it Friday. And she's leaving Saturday morning, I think, or she was leaving that later that night. So she literally came from packing and joined us on the set. And usually when we do videos, just the three of us. But this one, we wanted to have all of us. Yeah. And um, there's a different energy by, by having that. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. This song really is going to demand it, I think, too. And um, and Eric plays a big part keyboard wise in that song. So, oh, yeah. But it, but he, um, yeah, we I literally realized we had we had two days. I had a basic idea of what I wanted it to look like. And so I had to go around. I found a bunch of like vintage lamps and we found a location yeah. locked down. We had the location for five hours. That's it. So I went in the night before. I kind of just dressed the set, did a couple like tests to see what the lighting would look like. We got like, like a uh, kind of a mister in there to kind of miss the give it kind of a, a <laughs> film look. Oh, well, yeah. All night while we we're shooting, all he kept doing was saying "More Steve." More Steve. Always. I kept imagining from Pirates of the Caribbean. I kept just stumbling around looking for. <laughs> why is the T always gone? Um, but yeah, it was a lot of a lot of fun. But it was crazy, and it, yet it came together. It shouldn't have worked. It went very smooth. Yeah, like it, it was a late night, but it was a late night, and it shouldn't have it shouldn't have worked. And then I had an actor lined up and then th that fell through and then I knew my buddy Chris Reed acts so I reached out to him and I said would you do play this character this representation of that the human representation in the story and he said sure so he showed up we did a bunch of shots I did a bunch of stuff with green screen I took him outside we shot stuff outside and uh so how, do, how do you know how do you know Chris I've known him for years and he, he had a an old friend there. of mine yeah no he's I've known him on and off for years with his 204 the hits and before that I knew him from other radio stations and and um, no, I've just he's a he's a great guy, and and uh, he's so good. And uh, we even even have his image in the the actual CD for the single. He's in on the inside with a picture from the oh, video. nice, good, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he was great, and he just his acting was spectacular. He was did exactly what I was looking for. Oh, he's 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 phenomenal. I I did a movie with him about a long time ago. It was a Star Wars film, uh, like a fan film, and he was just. He was one of those guys, like, even, like, 15 years later, I still talk about working with Chris because it was, like, an amazing experience. Oh, he's the Great best. Dude. He's the yeah. best. And every time I see him at Comic-Con, he comes running up to be just, like, a, a really tall, kind of Conan O'Brien-esque uh, Ghostbuster. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. It's like, you know, Egon on, on steroids. Um, yeah. But, yeah, he's he's just such a sweet guy and such a – he's got a real kind soul to him, yep. too. He's yep. But yeah, he was, I'll do it. I'll be there in an hour. And it was like, he yeah. showed up. I gave him an overcoat. And I said, we're going to do this walk here. He took my directions. I said, just trust me. And there was some weird lighting with the green screen. It was just kind of flickering light I was using. He didn't understand what I was doing. And then when I placed him in with the time-lapse footage of the traffic, he went, oh, okay. <laughs> so it made sense afterwards. But he had a couple of people saying to me, how'd you get him in the time-lapse looking normal? I said, he's not there. <laughs> he's in front of a big giant green screen in the middle of a hallway. And uh, and then I took him outside and did some shots with him as well. So, you know, he was great. It was the video shouldn't have worked, but it did. Yeah. So. No, it's good. I, I actually quite enjoyed it. I was actually I, the funny thing is I never really watched the videos before. I've heard the music tons. Oh. So I just I just spent uh, I only direct them. It's not important. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I sat down. I sat down with the uh, the most critical eye in my house. Uh, that'd be Abby, my daughter, who does the intros to our show. And uh, I brought her in and said, let's watch these together. You know, it was, it was kind of fun because she has a like her mother. She has like a really good critical eye. So we were watching them together and she's like, I like the look of this, but I'm sorry. You don't sound like Ava Max. That's her. That's her jam right now. So she, you know, she wasn't a fan of the music, I, but I just, I just sound, I just sound like me and I'm going to have to live with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's like Mad Max type of scenery. Uh, yeah. I like that. It was good. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> so i i have a i have a question because like i've like i listened to you guys god shit, like i don't i i think you heard uh you heard the episode we did i was did, did one on 92 kick fm uh where i just right. played a i played one of your songs on there like from way 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 back is that like 2007 or 2008 or something or yeah, yeah. something like that it was uh, uh do it scared oh wow and, yeah yeah um, 2013 yeah so that was my introduction like way back when and then uh it was on my 
I don't know. It was I had I I I recommended it a lot, oh. but then I didn't. I had a hard time finding you guys on the internet because you know why. So it's easier just to yeah. type in why the band is. Yes. Oh, I, I learned that. Yeah. Song titles. You type in Soul Declares with a rate at the top of Google now. Oh, no, I know. Yeah, that's that what was I crazy. Today. Right? I was like, okay, how do I find? Oh, I'll just yeah. do. Well, I did do it scared because it's in my history. So. And it pops up. So, but it I remember up. just the first week that the video and the single came out, I just typed in Soul Declares and poof, video, yeah. you know, our our title, our, um, our you know, Spotify, everything was just like, do, 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 do. All you spent time on the SEO, oh. obviously. It worked. I mean, people, I mean, we found it within the first week, we hit like 5,000 views on the video. And I was just like, well, that's with the algorithm on, on YouTube. It crushes everything. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, now, Jeremy, you haven't always been in the band. I know. Um, when you, like, how did you guys meet? The two of you meet? It was a portal. I think it was, a, it was like a was porno. Like, it was a wormhole. <laughs> and it, it, I don't have the physics cleared on it but we bumped uh, into each other and i mean the weird thing is i've always wanted to work with him and dave our drummer has always said oh you know, we, you know who we need is a lead guitarist in this band is jeremy i said yeah when i was back in 2007 we did a show with the lineup that we had it was like an aids benefit at u of w and his band opened i think you opened or you no we opened for you guys uh, yeah. no we, no, we, which, op we, we opened for you we can, yeah. which band which band was that elion and they were like it was like two three year stint of a band it kind of had like radiohead vibes but you kind of in, hints of like Coldplay, and it was like kind of ethereal and and i don't know it was really cool i liked it i was really L -E -L -L -E -L -L -I -O -N? uh e-l-y-o-n oh cool that's a cool name actually yeah it yeah. is because uh, the um, reason the reason i'm asking is like i think i i recognize jeremy from pre-y so i'm like trying to like oh. figure out what bands you were in or if i because i used to go i used to watch about four or five shows a week back in the day and i was like okay. wondering if we might have run have caught him. maybe we like we mm, we played at dylan o'connor's and uh That's what's it like Shan shannon's shannon's that, we yeah. played there a couple times Dylan's had a really good stage the one the one had a really good stage one of him and i think um we played the zoo once so did we that zoo. was frightening <laughs> but it was but the sound was incredible the sound guy there I, Oh, the sound guy nice. was like wicked. He was so yeah. good. It was like playing it. The smell, it smelled like a hockey bag on stage. Yep. But the sound was always <laughs> awesome. But the whole time all I kept thinking was junior hockey. I smell hockey pads. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he, when he joined, it was 2015 ish, I think. And we, the first day we, I said, I asked 16. you. Yes, so, wait, so Dave was already, it, it was December of 16. Okay. We, we so and then so we Dave was in the band already then? So Dave was in. Dave knew of Jeremy. We talked when he said he'll never want to be in this band. I said, yeah. well, I'd really like to talk. I said, and then I realized I should have just talked to him a long time ago. So I used to see him all the time. But I was like, yeah, but he wouldn't want anything to do with us. And then the weird thing was the first time we got together, I just said, well, let's just see what happens. And so I had some, we started just kind of jamming. And within, I think, four hours, we wrote like six songs. What? That wasn't six. Was it four <laughs> songs? Something like that. We wrote, we wrote, we wrote the comeback right away. That was one of the first ones we did. I think. Oh, was it really? Okay, that that's a great. And then, and then we did. I think God Particle showed up in there somewhere. I remember there was like yeah. three. Okay, maybe it was three songs. Well, we, I, so I, yeah. <laughs> they weren't complete ideas. <laughs> they didn't all. They didn't all show up overnight. No, they came in. <laughs> this pieces, was like yeah. I joined. You know, we, we had a meeting at a Starbucks in like December of 2016. And then it was like holidays, and then seventeen. It was yeah. a new year, and we started getting together once a week, pretty much, well, if we could. By a certain point, we were shooting a video for for uh, repair the breach. Yeah, that in two thousand seventeen, and we got like I think a hundred people to show up as 17? extras. Yeah, I've got. Oh, I got. I remember that. Wrong? I remember that. Yeah. Okay, so then I'm a year. I think it's the fifteen we started talking. It, like we spent like a year writing. Yeah. 17 was the like, video first single for because we didn't we had an album idea but we just couldn't record it all couldn't afford to record it so we did the first one was right. repair the breach and then abstract art form did a remix for us of that song that, which that's was, cool i i like that one when, when that sort of shit happens yeah and um but yeah but i did find that you'd said you weren't much you didn't write a lot you used to kind of embellish on other people's stuff but as soon as i'd get together with him he had stuff that was just really great and even in rehearsals like us for Soul Declares, and we're playing, and whenever we're playing or rehearsing, and then Dave knows us too. As soon as 
Jeremy's like, if I go run off and get a glass of water or go take a piss and come back, he's he starts playing something and I'll go, oh, what is that? And he'll either say, oh, it's from a video game or it's a little Daniel Lenoir or something I've been fiddling with or, oh, it's just me messing around with like a Tears for Fears riff. And I'm, but when he says, I don't know, Dave will look at me and then we all stop and everyone takes their phones out and starts recording and go, okay, let's see where this goes. And that's <laughs> sort of where the best song is going to happen. Like Callous Tart was finished. It was an unfinished idea and then it kind of finished in rehearsal. But so the Clarice was one of these moments that just kind of happened. I think we just kept fiddling. We stopped doing it and just kept fiddling with it until we had a basic skeleton of a song. And then it kept yeah. evolving. Yeah. It, it kept it, improving. It, it, it didn't went, get worse. Yeah, it, it went better, through better, better. quite a long yeah. sort of process. It, well, it took us a while for, like, as the whole band to kind of, when, when Mandy came in with the bass, to figure out. Well, just the right ideas individual ever. parts we yeah. had the song but yeah. it was it was like trying to fit all the pieces together properly well you said that took a while yeah. you and said it took a while for us base, for yeah. some reason to like memorize it too because we had tried so many different combinations of yeah. things riffs doing this or like the bass is doing this no the guitar is doing this instead i think that was uh i think that was one where i I had a guitar riff in my head and then realized later, oh, no, that's the bass line. So you fit that and to so Mandy and then she kind of around fiddled and, around with it. Yeah. And then she nailed it. Oh, That was her first time in the studio, yeah. too, on this song. She's never been in a recording studio. Yeah, she was in. She's never been in a music video. Yeah, She's I remember you saying that just on like another interview. Cut. Yeah. And she, yeah, she, she came to the studio. We actually filmed her the day she was in the studio. And I remember after we rehearsed and Jeremy said, you should just play the part. We've been playing it all summer at festivals. Just once you play, you know it. And so she was like, oh, okay. And then as she's walking out to her car, I was kind of walking out with her just to make sure she got out to the parking lot. And she goes, turns around, she goes, I've never done this before. Goes, what are you talking about? She goes, I've never been in the studio. I've never recorded anything. I said, oh, well, that'd be fine. And then she, I walked in and, oh my gosh, this is bigger. This is a bigger moment for her. It's probably a bigger moment for her than it is for us. And yeah. she nailed it. She, I think she did it in two takes. Uh, Abby, when she watched the video that she was in, yeah, the daughter, she's like, that's the coolest person in the band, Dad. <laughs> that's what she said. That's what, that's what those other girls are saying at the show on Friday. Yeah. It's like, you're you're your hot. Your is so hot. You're amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I just kept thinking, that's what we have her. That's what it's all about. No, oh, and she liked she Dave's hair. That was the other thing she said. Uh, okay. Dave has, uh, yeah. he's got the flippity hair. He knows what he's yeah. doing with that flippity yeah, hair. Right. Yeah. Special yeah. hair. Oh, that's you know, awesome. We, we always we used to just say it was like it's the Witcher. We have the Witcher on. I remember when I said we had and on the drums, Gerald. <laughs> Gerald of Rivia. <laughs> he's got the potions. If his drumming starts to get low, he'll take a potion and the drumming will speed up. We'll be doing death metal in a minute. Uh, so yeah. He's... So when you guys so do you guys collaborate together when you guys are actually writing music or who, who does it start with one person? Like does, does Brian, do you show up with something or Jeremy has a riff or it always it varies back and forth. Yeah. yeah it's... So this is his, he has a riff and I go, wait, I think I got something. Other times I like soul declares I made that up. I didn't really have mm -hmm. any lyrics. I was just doing that kind of weird language I do that doesn't have words. Like the sc like melody. scatting. Well, right? And I also yeah. think like the stuff we're writing now is that more of that case, like yeah. the, the previous album, the first one that I w was on. Our best. Um, so far. Was a lot like, a lot of it was already like you had lyrics, right? Some, I had, I had some of it. I had like little scraps of paper and right. ideas on my phone notes. And but so I was willing over to that adjust course them. of the year, yeah. you know, we would get together at uh, at your studio, you know, the little whatever, rehearsal space. Yeah, but it's, rehearsal space. Yeah, well, I was I was borrowing. I'm calling a lot of favors just to re, you know, and I record stuff on like um, Audacity, so you could kind of get multiple tracks. Yep. And save it and and. Um, but make a bunch of demos. But I think really, and then Dave would come in and kind of fiddle around. He'd bring like part of a drum kit and just yeah. kind of bang things out. Yeah, but he I came knew. in every once in a while. I feel like it was mostly just us. Yeah. I think he was waiting for us to get all the, the, the dirt off. You yeah. Know, he wasn't going to come he, in and eat the yeah. carrots until we cleaned them well. And then, <laughs> uh, and then he'll eat the carrots. So okay. basic structure was there. Yeah. Oh, it's funny, um, but this, well, in our rehearsal space, it's really a great place for rehearsing for shows, but there's always that possibility that something's going to show up, or he'll just, something will show up in when he's noodling, warming up, 
And I go, what's that? He goes, I don't know. I'm just warming up. I said, no, no, that's a song. Record. And then we just start, you know, we have to record. So if I ad lib something, it's gone. Like we've got about five or six songs that are kind of just sitting and holding right now. Yeah. We have some that are done. That one was a holdover from the last album that's been, didn't feel like it, maybe just didn't have time to record it or it just didn't, it fits better now with what we're doing. So like Calloused Heart and, and Soul Declares. And there's a song we're working on called um, Glass Houses and Kettles Black. And it's a great tune. But I have a feeling even once we get in the studio, it's going to evolve some more. It won't be the same song by the time we're done. But it's he, it's almost really, best that way. Like I I yeah. think, like I think like I know when when Todd and I are are writing, um, in whichever project we're in, like sometimes I'll come forward with the idea and I've got it. Every, I get everything kind of all planned out in my head, and I'll you know I'll ask Todd, can you play this? And then, but th- then the song at the end never sounds the same, but it always sounds way better because the minute that like you guys seem to have a really good chemistry, just like Todd and I. So it's like that chemistry takes that germ of an idea, which is good, and it makes it great. Like I think, I I think that's kind of what you guys are doing. It's it great idea coming in, but it gets even better. And it's that, and it's the chemistry. It's like watching a movie and seeing two actors. You know, they may have their lines, but they may improvise some of those lines, and then all of a sudden, it's 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 a magical scene, right? Mm-hmm. That's why Chris Nolan uses all the same actors. I think he knows they, yeah. they know how to work off each other. Um, I think, too, with us is we have a safe space in the sense that it's like there's no bad ideas. Like if I venture out on a vocal idea and then I completely fall flat or it goes nowhere, no one's going, ooh, ooh. it's like it's attempts. It's all about the attempts. And yeah. some every so often you you kind of don't fall, you kind of fly. So I think it's always like the the baby bird process of just jumping out of the nest until you stop hitting the ground. And I think that's really great is that it feels really safe that you can you can absolutely suck and while well, you're trying to find your way to something special. And, I feel like uh, all great ideas come from bad ideas first, right? Like yeah, possibly. <laughs> possibly. We've been really fortunate though that we haven't we've had such great moments. And I think that Jeremy is such a, a brilliant artist. I mean, um I find when I'm working with him, I'm always feeling like well, I'm going to be fine because Jeremy's here and Dave, and Dave's here. It's going to be fine. They they're going to, you know, I can kind of do my arts, my arts project, kind of finger painting with lyrics and <laughs> vocals. But they're going to be, they're they're going to, you know, they're going to help me not, you know, splatter too far out of out of range. And I think too is like I'm in a position where I'll go, oh, I'll cut the lyrics there. I don't need they don't need lyrics there. I think this should be silent or there's no like this is my thing and I really love that. We really kind of put the song first i've never felt like i had to i would immediately if it felt the song should be instrumental no vocal i would just step away if it if it yeah. was best for that piece of music so um and we and the thing is too the last two songs we've done are very long we've had to do edits and we we're still coming along yeah but they fly mm-hmm. by and yeah. i i just at a point now i'm just like i'm not pandering to radio play anymore i'm gonna write we're gonna write the song the way it feels it should be what it needs to say and we'll do a radio edit and to send it out, but I mean, but it's like you said. I was yeah. listening to that interview you did. Uh, I can't remember what radio station it was, or or but you were you were chasing your numbers, you're chasing the downloads, you're trying to see, and it's like oh, none of that. Seattle. Shit, yeah, we were on that yeah. Seattle station. Yeah, none of that shit matters. No, Honestly, no. if you're if you're doing the song that that brings something out of you, that's all that matters. Who cares about? Mm-hmm. I like even on the podcast or, or dome when we had our, you know, like how how many do we sell? How many streams do we get? I used to look at that stuff all the time, and then the minute I stopped, I'm suddenly happy, and I'm actually not second guessing, you know, what we've created. I'm actually in, literally enjoying what we've created. It's like I like what we did. I like the song we wrote, or I like the podcast we put out, or you know, or the thing that I wrote. Like it, the minute you start wondering about what, if other people like it or not then you're doing it for the wrong reason i i feel well, it's like that rick rubin thing and even david bowie said that he said don't 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 create for the gallery it has to be authentic and the thing is when people see you're authentic they'll they'll respond to it like we've had so many shows i've had people come up to me and we're open for somebody like even that last show and this one woman came to me her and her husband says, i'm a big music snob and I went, oh, okay and i thought here we go i said you had everything i like in music is in your music and i went okay thank you and then she walked away and I was like, great. <laughs> it's like, but that's, that's a win is that I think people see there's an, there's a sincerity in what we're doing and we give everything we can on stage. And, um, sometimes I go a bit over the top and I'll do crazy stuff. We wander around the club <laughs> playing. I, he was following me. I was following him. It's, you know, 
But it's all about whatever it takes to get the sound out and get the emotion out and being real. And it, if you get into that place of trying to look cool or trying to, you know, there's, we know we're not cool. We just know we're just being real. And um, we're just trying to express us. I mean, I came up on Radiohead. So that's a band that just didn't care about that stuff. It was always just about, is the song great? That's fine. Yep. You know, at my own expense, as long as the song's great. And I think there's, there's that connection to people too, right? That you have people come up to you and say, this song means something. We have not the end. And we, I've had several people, including one who comes to every show. So that song is my song because it's talking about, you know, getting up after you've been knocked down for like the hundredth time. And, mm. and it was written about me feeling like I was just sick of being knocked down all the time. And every time I'd kind of get a step, a couple steps forward, I get knocked down or there's always somebody who wanted to like, you know, see me fail and it's like why did i and i got to the point where i didn't care if they enjoy that they enjoy seeing me fail i'm going to keep trying because there'll be no failure if i wasn't trying that's right and um can't so, succeed unless you fail and there's no failure in falling there's just failure in not getting back up mm -hmm. and that's what that song's about um and i think too is there's that connection to people when you you have a song and you see someone come up to you and say well this song does this for me or um i don't feel as suicidal I'm not, and I don't in any way think that a song is medicine or something, but if it gives somebody comfort and they're in, they're going through anxiety or they're dealing with depression and the song makes them feel like they're not alone or they feel like they can use that song as, a, an, as an anthem for their day to keep them going or they're humming it to themselves or it reminds them that they're going to be okay or there's better days coming. That's what art is. That's what, that's what art is its best. And that's your legacy. So a song well written is its best reward. It's its own reward really for you. And so, and the money and the stress. Look, we would love to make a living at this. We'd love to. The idea of having lots of people come to shows would be great because that means more people are hearing the music and more people are yep. being affected. Um, there's no agenda, but it's just we really believe in these songs and we believe that there's a reason they they came to us and we want to give do justice to them live, do justice to them in the studio. So when we mm -hmm. do a show, if it's two people or it's a thousand people, uh, we never do a half-assed show because if we if we ended up dead or broke up or something happened in the next, you know, and then oh, I saw their last show and they phoned it in. I'd much rather say I saw them. It was only about myself and my friend there, but they gave us everything. That's, that's why you do it because it's a pleasure and it's a gift to be able to play music live and, and have music out and a legacy of recorded <clears throat> songs. And if it's only two people that it touches, then they, that's who it was supposed to go to. Yeah, I, I, like, think I think about the masses, you know, I, I, I agree with that. Like Todd and I played a lot of uh, empty, empty houses. That's for sure. But it's like, you know what? Like, like me getting to play with my brother, like, so for me, like maybe, maybe it's a bit different, but like me playing with my brother is a big, is a big deal. Cause you know, like he's Todd, he's, you know, he's my buddy and, and us playing together. Like, I don't even care who's in the room at that point, but if someone, in, you know, gets off on it, it's like, wow, you know, these guys are good. But, it, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I'm playing with, you know, probably my best friend right here, you know, and it's, it's probably the same for you guys. It's like, but if you're, if you're playing, if you're playing for Jeremy and Jeremy's playing for Brian and, and playing for Dave and, and, and the rest of the group, and you're just playing for each other and, and enjoying each other's company, creating music together, everybody, if you're not off. playing to the crowd, the crowd's still going to like feed off on it. Like. And yeah. We are definitely they trying to connect with them, though. We're not. We're very aware of the people are there. I make eye oh, no, contact sure. with people. Um, I leave the stage a lot. I get in people's faces. I had some a girl come up to me and she was Especially facetiming with your new toy. Yeah, and I got the wireless <laughs> mic. So, but this this girl came up to me. Um, on she was on Facetime with somebody and she was like, so I just started singing to her. Was on Facetime with her, and I just yeah. thought, what are you, what, what are you doing? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> just like, okay, that I was cool. Just having yeah. fun. Yeah, and I think. Um, Honestly, as I said, I mean, I remember that John Baptiste post or the statement he made uh, when he won, I think, a Grammy for something. He said, music, songs, music has a way to find the people. It has a radar that helps it find the people that need it. So you don't have to worry about, yep. you know, getting people to pay attention. It will find the people it needs to find. That's a good and, saying. Yeah. So Yeah, I like that. Very good. Yeah. And we're, we, but we believe in these songs and we, we, we try to live up to them because they feel much bigger than us. So now who are your influences? I, I, I wrote a couple down because when I, when I hear you guys playing, I really get a feel of, there's a couple of bands out there, well-known bands 
and it uh, kind of gives you that feel of, of your style. And the first one I noticed was uh, you two. There's a there's a bit of a style that, that you have in, and between that and the cult. Well, like this, I don't I get the cult thing. I just yeah. never listened to the cult. I don't know why we get that. I think it's the ha, 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 just wasn't my thing. Oh no, but you know what? Like the cult the cult has two songs that get played on the radio all the time. Yeah. But they get a million more songs. They're actually a way better band than people give them credit. Well, for. I have nothing is I'm just I remember yeah, Love yeah. Machine and stuff, and I just thought I always found like he's he's an interesting singer. I just feel like range wise, I think I got a little bit more going on there. But for me it was yeah, I can see you two because one of my, my very first concert I ever went to. I was mm-hmm. gifted some tickets to see you two, uh, Zoo TV in Vancouver before they did the outside shows. So like I'm just, I was overwhelmed. I think the Pixies opened, and it was just like, like it was like '92 or something like that. I was just like 1992, and I was just stunned because I'd never seen anything. I'd never really been to a rock show, so it blew my mind. And uh, I thought, oh, I can do this. <clears throat> you really see Led Zeppelin? I'm like, I can't do that, you know. But I see that I could do that. Um, and Radiohead. I mean, Radiohead was a big part of, you know, my upbringing because I just love what they do. And now I listen to a lot of, I like Muse, although I go through Muse phases. And um, I also really like, I mean, I enjoy The Killers. Um, I don't know. I, I can I can hear some Interpol in your music, too. Oh, that's cool. I like mm. Interpol. And Interpol's you, awesome. We kind of share Interpol. similar. Uh, you like a lot of different stuff. Though. Similar. Manchester yeah, Orchestra. Stuff. What I about mean, you, Jeremy? I, like, what's I, your stuff? Um, I think when I, when I really started getting into music, um, definitely, uh, you two, uh, Uktung Baby, that album Ground Zero, man. was Ground one Zero. of the first kind of albums. I think it was like my brother's, I don't know. I was, and I borrowed it, but, um, so yeah, the edges <clears throat> way of, uh, approaching, guitar with effects and stuff has influenced me greatly um and yeah and and like over the years i guess you know muse the killers um uh who else i'm waiting for a left turn to come here like in some form some some sort of Albuquerque here, like some band that we wouldn't even think of. Uh, <clears throat> Delirious. They're a UK band. Um, um, I about... I grew up on a lot of that. Didn't you talk? Didn't you? Was it you that said you like Talking Heads stuff too, or was that someone else? Mm, no. It was someone else. I don't know. Someone no. said they like Talking Heads. Um, talking you had heads. mentioned the Pixies before. Like I can hear some kind of Pixie stuff going on in your playing. I always just I saw them. <laughs> open for you too and that was sort of my introduction to them i didn't really know much about my mom knew a lot about the pixies and that's songs. sad that's my number one favorite band for yeah. hands yeah. down yeah it's um but like jeremy's style though like there's there's some joey santiago going on there mm-hmm. just kind of some some dissonance and then some just tom morello moments too i hear in some yeah yeah too. yeah um yeah audio slave kind of moments happening in there sometimes but I think to mm-hmm. oh and oh J- Jack White Jack White was a big had an impact during a, a, a period of our writing I think Jack White's like Jack White's solo stuff or White's yeah stuff? yeah yeah was it Lazaredo is that the album yeah that movie that album was like we we're all listening to that yeah. I think that's where the Prophet kind of came out of and um yeah there's uh, so many oh I, Jeff Buckley for me too Jeff oh, Buckley okay. was a big mm. I someone gave me a CD of his it was like his only really he's on the only album grace and they said listen to this i think you need to hear this um because i was just starting to get into singing and I said, you need to listen to this so let's do it and there was a sort of this crazy kind of gravel but then also this beautiful falsetto to his voice and i thought wow that's that's amazing that um, kind of fell into that tom york era for era mute for math me. is another one for oh me oh my gosh yes mute, mute math, math. Okay. mute math yeah, yeah. they're from uh, new orleans they're from new orleans yeah the, the original lineup I don't think is the same. They might write still together, but um, I saw them on Letterman one time. Man, they're blown away by them. He was like, "Are those your drums? Did you buy those?" They're yeah, they're really good. The drummer would sit down and duct tape his headphones on. (laughs) They put on quite a show, and then he would (laughs) just you know, 
and then they switch mm -hmm. instruments and they start passing drums around and then he'd oh, his, his they'd floor do tom and he'd stand on it and the crowd would carry it and he'd be like balancing on top of this floor tom and that's awesome kind of sounded like the police <clears throat> like like early police mixed with chaos i don't know it was but there's such great groove and there's soul to it but yet it still rocks there's some soul jazz kind yeah. of influence like, like they're incredibly chaos talented is great. like yeah. I love that like song. I am gonna be I am gonna be looking for every every single one of these bands I don't yeah. recognize and add that add math. It. They did they got used in a car commercial for blood pressure. I think the song blood pressure was used in a car commercial. Was it Kia or something? Was it? So yeah, I saw the other one. Whoa, whoa, what's going yeah. on? Because they don't do commercials, but that's yeah, where the money is. Yeah, they yeah. had yeah. typical and chaos were like my top favorites of theirs. Yeah, they had a couple of spotlight. That was another big hit, and I think I think that might have been in one of the twat feel like one of their songs was in one of the twilight movies possibly yeah on the one of the soundtracks I maybe remember reaching out to them of a different movie i well they played the west end yeah. one time and i reached out to them before the show and i said you guys need an opening act and they said oh geez we do have somebody locally if you guys reached out earlier and i was like what i'm so what? sad i missed that show they've oh. never been back here i found a t-shirt from the show at a value village and i can't find it now it's, <laughs> it's somewhere in the you know uh Panels of lost Actually, lyrics. <clears throat> early on, I, when when I was like just in my room learning how to play guitar every single day, uh, <laughs> um, one of the artists <laughs> that I listened to a lot actually was um, Edwin McCain. From he's from down south in the states. Like a singer songwriter. Like he had all the wedding hits. <laughs> I'll be. Um, I'll be oh, this guy, okay. your crying shoulder. Oh, yeah. That guy. I've heard that, that guy. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, he's, like, had, he's like a modern Neil I Diamond. A few, is I have a few of his albums. And they're, oh. like, they're, they're all like seasoned musicians. Like, yeah. it, I don't know. I, there was something about it. He influenced my like acoustic playing, definitely. And I don't know. Wow. That, that was just something I stumbled across when I, know, I was younger. So. I think Dave likes Switchfoot a lot. He's talking about <clears throat> Switchfoot a lot. A Switchfoot, lot. yes. Switchfoot. Like, I, I also was into Switchfoot. Yes. Yeah. I, I liked some yeah. of their stuff. I thought it was really good. What was that one? Um, what was the song? Was it Move? Or it was one that someone was talking about it on. It was a bunch of people talking about it on TikTok. The other Dare day. You to Move? Dare You to Move. That song, I guess, had they a really impact. songs in that movie, uh, Walk to Remember. Yeah, that's what it was. That's, that's what, what it was. Okay, I was like, I was trying to make the connection. It yeah. kind of boosted their yeah. popularity, yeah. I think. Well, I remember, <laughs> yeah, and I remember you'd hear them, like, on Kick FM once in a while. You'd hear them on Creek. I think you even heard, I heard, I heard some Switchfoot on City one time. But I don't know if it was just, like, feature play or what. But... Yeah, I know it's wild. It's it's just the things that you kind of like. Daniel and Waz' first few albums I really liked a lot too. Um, the tea which party. I've I'm only recently now. But why did you, why did you get into cause... Daniel and Waz? Because I've loved Daniel as a producer, and I mean he's I made you yeah. listen. Damn it! Well, I got into Daniel Lanois pretty much because of Red Dead Redemption Two, because <laughs> <laughs> he did the uh, yeah. the soundtrack yeah. portion. I have that game. Of that, yeah, that's, game. yeah, you well, beat that. I'm just, yeah. just like, I'm obsessed with that soundtrack. It lives in my head rent free. Yeah, like plays it sometimes. We're just sitting around, <laughs> or he'll slip into like, was it? I've been out for a while. We used to sometimes play yeah, Tears for Fears. Um, everybody wants to rule the world. And I was like, what is that? Mm. What is that? And you were just like noodling on it. And I was like, I know yeah, that song. That's some good, there, you know, there's a lot of yeah songs like that, it's especially kind of, Tears for Fears. Yeah, I like. Growing up, I would hear those songs on the radio, but they they really like they really impacted me. It, like there was, I I remember them clearly. Not that I knew who they were, but uh, you know I was fairly young. But like nowadays, when it, when I like now with the you know you have Spotify, you can just access anything, and I'm like, yes, this is so cool. I remember this song. And I, oh, this is them. They have so many hits. I, I had no idea. But you yeah, introduced and, me to a lot of really cool bands that you heard on like CBC and stuff too. Oh um, yeah, CBC Radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was it? Uh, you, I mean, there was was it Monsters and Men? Of Monsters and, and Men. Yeah, yeah, I got into them. Um, I got into. If only we had Kick FM still around, because yeah. honestly, just a, a station that played like '90s to now, like rock and pop. That's what we need. 
but we yeah. don't have that here in Winnipeg. They have it in every other city in Canada. Mm. We yeah, it's funny, it. right? Yeah, I don't know. I like, why are the killers not playing Winnipeg? Well, because no one's playing them. That's why. <laughs> Isn't that weird though? Like why airplay? Yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't that get airplay? Like I don't like mm-hmm. we we my wife and I play a lot of rock band because my wife's not a musician, so my I always wanted her to pick up an instrument so I could play with her. So, so rock band's the closest we get, right? So <laughs> killers, you know, hey, whatever, whatever works, right? But um, like she discovered the killers on there. We just uh, she discovered the talking heads on there. Uh, she discovered um Bob Dylan. That's where she discovered Bob Dylan from was from rock band. Oh wow, my mom's a big Bob Dylan Beatles fan. Oh, my mom was the one who told me about Lord though. That's kind of funny. She was you should have this girl. Your mom, really? Was great. Yeah, my mom was you should check out Lord. I went, okay. I like Lord. Lord. I actually yeah. do like Lord quite a bit. Well, that first album she was really into. Um oh, yeah. what I've been really into a lot lately though, because I love Radiohead, is I've been listening to The Smile, which is Tom York and Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead. And they had formed this band because Radiohead's kind of on a hiatus. Yeah. And they think they played the Montreal Jazz Festival last year, but they it's all organic instruments. So if you hear horns and things and cello, it's people on stage. And then the band swaps instruments too. So Tom will play bass yeah. sometimes or and it's like Radiohead, but it's Radiohead, but really um organic instruments, like real like yeah. it's not a lot of samples. Yeah, because they started going something. really like digital and a lot of. And that's yeah, great. It's crazy fun to watch them do that. But oh yeah. The, but I mean, I was blown away. Like, there's a song that I still stuck in my head that uh, "Free in the Knowledge" from the first album. Like they put out two albums in like two years. I didn't it's even hear bad. that stuff. I didn't have to go yeah. listen. I'm a big Radiohead fan, yeah, so I'm it's just called. It's called the Smile, and it's. I mean, Tom York has side projects and Adams for Peace and and Tom yeah. York albums, but. Yeah, yeah. The smile is just really great, and you got Johnny Greenwood on guitar, and piano, and they kind of play all different kinds of instruments. Um, yeah, that, and I also really love watching those basement sessions, like when Radiohead did, like in Rainbows, yeah, from front to, and in this basement. I don't know if it's at BBC or wherever it is, but they just it's like a rehearsal space, and they just play the whole album. It's it's kind of wild. Yeah. Can we Lenny agree Kravitz. that in Rainbows is? Oh, like, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Lenny Kravitz. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just thought of another influence of mine, Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> Lenny Kravitz. Okay. For afternoon. I hung out with Lenny for an afternoon. I'll have to show you the picture. Uh, yeah. Really nice. And he's a nice guy too. Yeah. Super That's nice I, guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, in Rainbow's best Radiohead album or, or not? You know, I mean, the perfect radio album I'd say is is the Benz because it's got so many hits on it. But yeah, sure. Okay, computer's great. I really like There There. Or, not There There, but uh, Hail to the Thief, which has yeah, yeah. There There. That's one of my favorites. Mm. That was Hail to the Thief was the first album that I had. Actually, my friend from my previous band burnt <laughs> burnt a copy for no. For he all bought of us. the band. He didn't <laughs> pirate anything. He and, uh, bought the band. <laughs> and I was like, man, what? is this like i knew who radiohead was because that was a really whatever was on the radio album. and yeah. man i was like man this is really dark and well i don't know i just i i have to be in the right mood now mm-hmm. to listen to that radiohead one. but i i do agree in rainbows though is is, is the cool most album. most palatable for well, for the, people who aren't necessarily the bands into come radiohead. on the bands. Well, the bands is yeah High and dry uh, fake plastic trees. Yeah, just that's true. That's true. Street yeah, that, spirit. That was a rock band favorite. Fake plastic trees. We played that one all yeah, the time. But man. in rainbows was free. Yeah, that was. Free. <laughs> but I ended up buying a copy. I did. Well, I bought a copy. It had all the little yeah. stickers. And you could create your own cover. Yeah. That was yeah, it was wild. That was that, yeah, that was the moment where uh, my, my wife really won out. Like, there's there's a couple of moments where my wife did a couple of amazing things. One was. Sean likes this radio headband. I bet she doesn't know about this album. So she actually bought it for me. Um, and she had to buy it through the website. Like you couldn't, oh, you couldn't really? buy it nor- like normal ways. Right. Mm-hmm. So she bought the digital copy and then ordered it and then paid for it. And then the other time was when she bought me tickets for the Pixies. And she managed to get tickets for that. And that was like oh. wicked. So, you know, I, I paid her back and I went to see Taylor Swift with her. That was, <laughs> that was my return. Uh, yeah. But the, well, the I, price wasn't the same as the for the Pixies as it was for uh, Taylor Swift, let me tell you. I've had the opportunity to see July Talk now, I think two or three times. That was, They were mind-blowing as a band. Like, I didn't know what to expect. Um, and I only went because I, I got a friend of mine gave me a ticket. He said, I got a spare ticket for, for, uh, for Metric. And I went, oh, 
okay, cool. I love metric. So oh, yeah. went and July talk opened and it was at uh, the arena and it's like a year or two ago. And just what the hell am I watching here? It was incredible. It was like st stage performance. And it was like theater. And it was like, they were, at, they were working off each other. Like they were like this fighting couple and, it was like you know those French dancers that look like they're beating each other up, but they're not. And she would grab his from Montreal, hair and right? And these guys. What's that? Were they from Montreal? I think. Uh, I'm not sure where. I thought they're from Toronto. July Talks from oh, Toronto, Toronto, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because they just got turned on to that this year. Yeah, they're wild live. I mean, but it was such a great stage performance. Um, yeah, it's funny. You know, it, it's the stuff you find and or you discover something. Or I love when people someone someone shows me something new and I go, oh, well, he does that. I get songs from him and artists. Mm. Um, you're talking about that one. Is it Midnight? They're from Toronto. Midnight Run, or no, that's not it. Um, Me? Yeah, there was a band you were talking about at one rehearsal one time. You oh, it? Half Moon Run. Half Moon Run from Ontario. And I, and I checked yeah. them out. I was like, holy crap, these guys are good. Like really yeah. good. Like there's some great Canadian music right now. Yeah. I think we're oh, yeah. we're and I think Winnipeg right now too. You got Moonfield, who's a great band here. Um, uh, Sunbreather. Um, uh, I'm trying to think who's the other band that I. Uh, we just played some shows with them too. Two shows with them. The singers, that slim guy. I can't remember what they're called. Don't know. Why can't I remember? Because I've had no sleep. <laughs> um, man, we did two shows with them too. That's their, uh, twelve twenty one, which is oh, great. twelve twenty one. Yeah, brothers. We, we, we played. We actually ones. played with them. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, they're great. <clears throat> we yeah, played two shows good. with those guys. We played. Um, why can't I remember the name of that band? You know what I'm talking about, right? Um, I think they had a sax player too. Sax. Um, we played the rec room yeah. with them, and then we played at. Uh, uh, oh my gosh! Why can't I think? And they just they were just in the studio recording too. Not love letter. No, no, love, love letter. We played with love letter writers, which now they're just love letters. Yeah. Um. No, and that, we only did one show with them. But these guys, uh, they played with us at the. Uh, why can't I think of this? Uh, the rec room and the and the tap house you play with them. Slow, no, not slow mobile. Slow mobile. Yeah, that? yeah. Slow mobile. Oh, slow mobile. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like they're just yeah. really good. And we just that Phantom Head show we just did. That guy, the singer for Phantom Head. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that, I haven't what heard them voice. yet. That's that's a new one for me. I, I didn't live though. That. that guy's voice is. Sp he's the drummer. Like he's drumming and really? singing live, and it's like pristine, perfect vocals. Mm -hmm. they, they even did a cover of. Um, Show me how to live by Audio Slave, and it's like, oh, oh, nice. what? And he's drumming a full out and singing <laughs> and singing. <laughs> like, Dave looks at me. I was like, what do you think of that? I said, well, I have no trouble singing and just moving around without tripping over people. So no, I couldn't do that. Couldn't drum have the coordination to drum and sing. Yeah, it's it's I I do I do it's it's very difficult. But there's like there's certain songs where the vocal the the, the vocal rhythm does not go with the drum rhythm. The their counter. Mm -hmm. You, 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 I don't know, chewing gum and patting your head at the same he time. He sings like an angel, though. Like it's just incredible. Dave, no, I've got, I, I'm, I'm literally uh, typing Dave. stuff. No, in Dave doesn't sing like an angel. Yeah. Dave, Dave does not sing like an angel. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Dave. That guy, right? Yeah, we love you, Dave. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave, look, Dave, oh Dave. Now, Dave, you know we love you. I, I just feel like we're gonna go into the Cheech and Chong thing now. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say, these are the days I know I know from uh, the or yeah you, yeah that's even better I think I want to play that next time we go and say that'll be the song that Dave has to walk out to it yes oh these yeah are that'd the be days awesome. I know I know these are the days I know oh man oh, that's, that's awesome. so stupid question for Jeremy yes what brand of guitar are you playing in your videos mostly I, I looked at it it looked like Yamaha and then when I saw the headstock I went no that's not a Yamaha it's a reverend reverend yeah. Okay. I've heard of them, but I've never made in. Mine is made in Korea. Oh. I don't know. Is that I, bought yeah. locally? Sorry. Is that bought locally? Yes. Reverend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was at uh, Quest Music. Oh, it looks like you get a space on your wall there. You could put uh, a Reverend guitar up there. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you might just have to come that, by. Now we know what you've got. We may have to break into your house and uh, <laughs> my a show. Mine's called the Reverend Buckshot. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just love, I don't know, I, I like the, awesome. it It wasn't super expensive, I really like the look of it, and it's got a great I tone, and you use a, vo you use a box for your, hey. you, you're kind of playing around with other amps now, but. Yeah, I'm looking at getting something What else. is the guitar you have with the, as Dave calls them, the F holes in it? Uh, That, yeah, my red one, That that's a Washburn. 
HB30, which is supposed to be like a Gibson, whatever it's called. I don't know, a hollow body or something with the F holes, kind of like the, the one, like kind of like the red one on your wall there. Uh, yeah, it's a it's an Epiphone actually. It's not a Epiphone. You know, it's nice. You get nice yeah. feedback from uh, it. Three thirty nine, I think. Yeah, yeah, you can get so some it's... feedback with the uh, especially. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. it's got some pretty nice, uh, wow. nice tones. Yeah, that was my first electric guitar. Oh, really? Yeah. And you're still playing your first electric guitar? Is that? That's awesome. Yeah. Dave's still playing yeah. his first kit. It needs a little work. We're poor. I need. <laughs> I need. Yeah, but uh... we spent all our money on recording. I think it's the problem. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm I've been looking good. online right I'm now. I. I've been actually. Village. I've been looking into some. Uh, I I, I kind of want to get a Joyo amp. Oh yeah. Off off Amazon, the um, ones from AliExpress. Called? The green one. It's uh, it's supposed to be modeled after after the the Voxes, the AC amps. So, and I've I've watched a few YouTube videos on them. You know, reviewing them and stuff. And it's like, because like it's so small. Like you and can it get the sound you need for, especially some of the feedback. Well, yeah, feedback. you just, I mean, you have a speaker still, right? But Otherwise, yeah. if it, all I hear is Dave, I can't hear you. Oh, yeah. I'm in trouble. Man. But like, I need to fill your guitar. My issue is, I, I like to use a lot of effects, and I've been doing it wrong all these years because I've been playing into <laughs> well, a. I don't want to be right. I've been playing into a Vox um, AC15, which just has one channel. There's no effects loop. Oh, so, okay. And I, I run a, a Nova system multi-effects unit and it has analog distortion and drive circuits in it but that's all just going straight into the amp first with and i i use a lot of different like delays and reverb and different effects right so those should be in the effects loop of an amp right and it, you ever it tried would to sound, play they the would sound cleaner it's like I, i'm playing the wrong amp for how maybe that's how why I we play. sound maybe that's why we sound different though well that I could mean, be whatever we say, but so. i've been i i've been looking at anyways some yeah. other options out there at least something with an effects loop and what were you gonna ask there todd no i was just gonna say sometimes with the multi-stomp boxes or whatever if you go through say a, a set of studio monitors or or through a stereo it um it, it sounds really good but it, it kind of depends on you know on your equipment but Mm -hmm. But usually, if you want like a clean amp, which is which is true to the sound that's coming out of your your uh, your pedal unit, yeah, it's, it's it, it. I guess it all depends. <laughs> yeah, but well, I'm, like and like this, uh, Soul declares when we went in to record that, Steve, um, our producer at Green Egg Studios. <laughs> It's like a give him a plug. Steve Green at Green Egg Studios. Steve Winnipeg. Green. Great producer. <laughs> um, Steve. We we ran the guitar tracks and it just like wasn't sounding very good because because of how my rig is set up and it, it it's not great for um studio recording. Um, he suggested renting a rev amp, the D twenty, and then we could run the effects loop. Um, like my effects into the effects loop and then whatever and it, it was like he played we did it again and played it back to back and it was yeah. like oh it sounds, <laughs> it sounds now, like right? crap now yeah. when you're, when you're what live, am i doing you're using the room a lot it, but and... live it's it is different it's yeah. it's totally different live rather so than weren't capturing recording it in with the, a yeah. you know you he has like you know a fantastic mic for the guitar amp but it's still you know, it's not the same. It's totally different line. And he's That's a guitar guy too, so he knows. He's like going, mm -mm, yeah, mm -mm. yeah. He's pretty. Or you know, you delay well, that down again. We're gonna drop tune that part and make it sound a little thicker. We'll just blend it in there. You won't even notice it's there, but you'll feel it. Okay, sure. We just listen to him. I don't. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty. I don't good ask. You know, but when I do a vocal lately, he's just like, good. So shouldn't I do it again? No, nope, you got it. <laughs> don't you know, hate that? Better. And he's like, no. Nope. <laughs> like, is it? I'll do another one. Honestly, I'll do another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought where I've said, I don't think I, the emotion wasn't right on that. I didn't do, I gave it away too early or I didn't, I wasn't invested. <clears throat> you know, go, okay. But then you'll say, do it, but then double it. 
So I want you to double it in just this one spot, and then you just kind of blend it away where you don't notice it's doubled. Like sometimes you hear a recording and you can tell it's doubled. Oh, I hate it for sure. Yeah, you know, really, that over. That always makes me nervous having to double the same it's guitar like, line, especially if it's kind of complicated. It's like, yeah. Does he make you do that a lot? The doubling? He, yeah, we've been doing that like pretty much all the time now. Oh yeah, just to beef I, up the the whole sound. Yeah, I just sit there in awe of the two of them. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm just <laughs> I just write words. And, uh, <laughs> I make noises with my mouth. Yeah. I did. I, I did notice on not not the end, um, at the very beginning. It almost sounds like "Lay It On the Line" from Triumph. But yes, like you heard late, that too. Yeah, but later on, like your vocals, There's it's no way like that was an stereo. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but your vocals are like a stereo chorus, uh, in in some of the parts of the song. Same with the prophet, like you get that stereo chorus going out with your I vocals. Didn't do any doubling yeah. on those? No, it's no, not a no. sound. It's not sure. so much a double. No, I'm that pretty was a long sure. time ago. No, I mean, that's right. He wasn't doing all that doubling vocal stuff at that time. But it might have been the effect, right? Like he was using Maybe he used an effect. I don't know. Like he made it sound huge. Maybe he put it through some sort of core thing or something. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I mean, live, I, I don't know. I just, I felt like I was just performing it because that song really is a live song. So. And when you're but, singing, you're belting it out. Like, I, I'm amazed that your voice at the end of the night, like, you can still talk. <laughs> It's in the old, and you? I first started doing it. I couldn't, I was screwing my voice. I wasn't singing right. And I've learned to sing and it sounds like it's loud, but it's not loud. It's just controlled and strong. I can, right. I've learned now I don't need to scream over the band. Yeah. And so I'm finding my vocal fry where I need it. And um, it's a lot of, although when I hold notes, we did, we did a cover of Radiohead um, uh, Creep. And I do that, those, especially those big notes after the second chorus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And it feels almost like euphoric. I get dizzy, but it's like almost like, oh, it's a good kind of like almost like you're a drunk kind of buzz. Totally um, know what you're saying. Yeah, yep. it feels I've really, hit that point too. It's really a great feeling doing that song. Um, it, okay, hang on. Let's let, let, let's hang on that for a sec. So, does a guitar player get that same euphoric feeling, like that that note you're talking about when you hit that note? Because I've done it live. There was there was a moment where I can't remember where we were. We, we were playing anyway, and I and I hit this note, and it was that moment where all of a sudden the audience just stops doing what they're doing, and they start watch. That's when they really start watching, and I'm hitting this note. It's a long note. I'm starting to see colors in the room. I'm getting this euphoric feeling. Do guitar players actually get that? Do you get that on Callous Tartan, that big note? Because I get the big buzz when you hit the note that in the solo when you hit the you press the pedal and it goes to that higher part of the solo. Oh yeah, I was like, oh man. <laughs> but maybe that's just me yeah maybe. well no I, I mean i don't know if it's the same thing but I, uh, it that you're describing but it, every once in a while i will have one of those uh i don't know religious experience I, I, i've heard Chills. someone else describe it as a as like a basic like a, a musical orgasm you're you're, you're just you're like There's you just songs, feel yeah. this all of a sudden just like everything yeah. is just coming right. together i don't know and the crowd it's historic it is, it is yeah it's almost like you're leaving i've had body. i've had those moments from time to time that yeah it's no question so it's not just me and brian then no, i don't start like seeing things but well you guys is probably from the lack of oxygen <laughs> that that's yeah that's <laughs> yeah, what i was I, yeah i think maybe we're concussed or something <laughs> <laughs> could be <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute. Minute. You're not getting any fresh air. Sitting down to a very stars. dark, erotic path. I don't want to talk about. It. <laughs> um, but I mean, there's moments like songs that you may be having. We've had nights where it's like, I know this isn't our best show, but I'm going to keep pushing it. And then we get to certain songs, and they just sort of save us. And I find it's like Soul Declares is like that for me. It, you can have a crap show, but once you get to Soul Declares or not the end, those songs seem to really. They kind of just make everything work or make they make everything better it's like oh, okay there you go that's why we're here mm. you know yeah it's like there's these spiritual epiphanies almost that happen in those songs and i i kind of lose myself especially in soul declares i lose myself in it that's what all the weird movements and dancing and i was watching the video going, what the hell am i doing <laughs> but it's i get lost in it live i just i'm lost in that song your mojo you know? rising yeah, no. I just yeah, exactly. I just go yeah. full Jim Morrison or something, or Tom York meets Jim Morrison. I just don't yeah. care what I look like. I'm just trying to get the song out and feel it. And, mm -hmm. but we've had some fun. Like we when we played the Honey Festival. We headlined that. That was wild. As soon as we finished, because we end with God Park. We end God Park with these big crescendos, like down, down. And I'm jumping 
and jumping and jumping down to my knees and back up again. And then as they said, well, with that, we want to do the fireworks on your last song. We want to know how the song ends. So Dave explained, we gave him the set list. The fireworks guy starts firing on like the third crescendo. It's like, down, down, down. And the fireworks behind us, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> when I said, and, went, ah, and I did my vocal, good night. And it's like, blah, blah. so someone sent me a video of it. It's like the stage looks like this big. And it's just the sky of like, like the Cochise video from Audio Slavers. It was just insane. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's how you end a show. When did, we, when did we become ACDC? That was oh, nuts. Was really good fireworks. <laughs> and it felt great. And I was like, wow. A little dangerously close. It was like, really, you could feel the heat. Literally right behind And I saw Dave's face. eyes get really like big as he's were... finishing the crescendos. They suddenly noticed there was explosions happening. When he's like, boom. They were like lighting them off like maybe 100 yards from the stage. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, the stage was, was dwarfed by scary. I have to it send you guys so the video. Much. It's on, on our TikTok and Instagram. It's just, uh, the stage looks like this. And someone shot it from across the street. You see the crowd. And then you just see this, whoa, the sky is just full of light. And there's this little tiny stage. And I'm like, there we are right there. And we're just all like, <laughs> no. <laughs> People are like, can I get you to sign this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because we're just been enamored with it. Because we never had, had that happen to us before. It was wild. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was one of those cool. Those are great moments when those things sort of happen. And we're hoping for some more really cool moments. We're gonna see where what this year brings us. So, hey, let's create a cool, cool moment now. Do you guys want to play some? Sure. Uh, we just need a second to set up. Is that okay? You guys have to yeah. do a little creative editing. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Song we're one of the first songs we wrote is called "The Comeback." Oh. Okay, we're good now.
Nice. Very nice. Very nice. I couldn't hear anything, so hopefully <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> was no, we're good. guessing. We're guessing there. Hopefully nothing was out of uh, sync with the mixing there. So. Yours okay? Here. Yeah. Okay. Did we lose you? No, no, no. Okay. No, no. We did something wrong there. Like, oh. No, 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 no. It sounded good. <laughs> Let you guys get settled back in. So, so how was that for you? <laughs> we couldn't hear. We had no monitoring, so we're just kind of hoping you guys are hearing it right. Cause yeah, no, actually, the, really good. Really good the good levels were, were really good. Awesome. Very good. Very good. It's, it's, that is weird. Usually, even in a in the rehearsal space, we at least have a monitor on the floor somewhere, even acoustically, we get to hear ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, so it wasn't even coming in your earbuds at all. No, I they, they were. I could try to do it, and I can't. I had to step back in the cord. The cord was too short, so they came on. I went, well, forget it. This. Is ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Good instinct, because <laughs> you, yeah, you knew when yeah, to pull back on the mic. Yeah, right, Stagecraft. Yeah. yeah, just gonna. Like, yeah. I don't know how loud I am, so let's hope. <laughs> nice. So, um. So what, what what's coming up next? You you have some show. You guys have been playing a lot. Like that's the the one thing I noticed is there was there was the period where I where I came on and kind of found out about you guys, and then there was kind of a quiet period. This was like pre COVID, and then kind of through COVID, you guys, pardon my language, you guys said fuck this. We're doing shows. We're going to do them live from you know from your jam space or whatever. And you did a few of those shows. And then once everything opened up, you guys have been gung ho, just playing and playing and playing and playing. We got um, a taste for it. We got a taste for it, and it was like, now let's see what it'd be like with an audience because it was very sterile. Oh yeah, it felt like method acting. Yeah. It was like I'm pretending there's people digging yeah. this because yeah. I have no idea because you kind of feed off that That's audience. Tough. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. That's tough. But, but now you guys we had done it. It would have been very sad not to play live. I think it just felt really good to just. Mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, people are enjoying this, but we're having fun. So. Well, that that's key. So what's uh what's the next thing? We're playing uh we've been asked to we've been added to the bill uh for a cancer benefit um at, at the, the park, park right? theater. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh Aero Car Model Four, who are just incredible. And the first day he said, Oh, you guys should go on after us. I'm not following you guys. <laughs> you heard them? They're like it's like following disturbed. I'm not following this. We'll <laughs> go on before you because you guys are gonna bring the house down. <laughs> They're incredible. Um also DB and the Deadbeats. I have don't know much about them. I just know that, the, and it's a show for Never Alone Cancer Foundation, and yep. also a Vince Kroshak who's uh, dealt with a uh, brain tumor, and he's a great videographer who does a lot of shows in photography, and he's just this amazing guy. I've been chatting with him. I haven't met him, but I've been chatting with him online quite a bit. So, looking forward to meeting him. He's gonna be. I'm gonna be filming stuff. So, dude, just relax and enjoy the music. But no, he's gonna be doing his thing. That's his art. Yeah. But uh, we never played the park before. Oh and, no, really? Uh, yeah, that's a no. We've never played the park theater. Oh. We played, we played some nice stage. We played the Hilltop Resort. We played all these different like big stages, which is great. It's fun playing those big stages, but to play the park, it's just exciting. Um, and uh, so uh, we're just kind of getting all the details worked out for that and what we need to work on for gear and what crew we need and what crew we don't need. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Well, we're going to be the first band on. So I think we're going on 9.30-ish, maybe, 9. So it's a, And it's an all-ages room, the park, which is great. And um, it's a great cause. And, uh, yeah, so you should be going to these shows going, oh, we're going to make some money for recording. And this show, we're going in, hey, can we donate some money from our merch? Like I said, we were talking about this. I said, well, you, you say, well, you guys can sell merch. I said, yeah, but we probably should donate something from the merch. That we kind of, it's a little self-serving if we're there selling merch at a yeah, yeah. benefit show. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to figure out a way to donate a percentage uh, from all the merch that we sell at the show um, to the um, to the foundation. So, so um, the the other that's thing March thirtieth, by the way. March, March oh yeah, March thirtieth. Yeah, it's a Saturday, March thirtieth. This episode will be up by then. What's that? I'll, I'll, I'll make sure this episode's up by then. You can get your tickets at myparktheater.com. Like they have them on sale online. Ten dollars in advance and fifteen dollars at the door. So I know Winnipeg's a walk-up city, but it would be great if people would, you know, buy them early because I think they want to kind of gauge how it's going to do. I don't know. Um, you can still, I think you can get tickets from some of the bands too. We're, but I'm pretty sure you can sell, you can buy them online at um, myparktheater.com, like the yes. Park Theater website. I believe that's, that's right. for all the bands. Yeah. What's that? And you see all the bands for. Yeah. Uh, well, all th well, there's just three of us, I believe. But I think there's some, also going to be some other auctions and different things going on there too. So. 
So three bands for 10 bucks. Yeah. You can't beat that. No. Todd, what did you pay for a journey? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't uh, that. <laughs> no. No. That's kind of our price range for shows. We're in, we usually run ten, fifteen dollars for all our gigs. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and so you guys and you guys have been releasing singles. So just single, single, single. Is there a plan? Album. Yeah, but it's just a matter of if we had the money, we'd go and record the album sure. right now. But what out. is the idea to do an EP or do an album? We have enough material. I'm sure we have an album. There's a bunch yeah. of skeletons of songs too. There. Well, yeah. Ideally, we'd like to do another album, I think. But for for digital release and stuff, you you're just going to keep you know pumping well, one. You want to still stay done. relevant and stay out there and have an opportunity for people to buy your music and know your music, so come to your shows. So I, I think that's that's the new model now, though. Like, yeah, release singles. Like, there's some there's some bands that they they aren't doing albums at all. It's like no, it's just everything's a single. Everything's a single. It's like, like there's nothing albums. wrong with that. I like albums though. If an artist is gonna put on an album, I want to hear a whole idea, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. But once you once you have you know ten or twelve songs or or whatever you know whatever the magic number is, mm -hmm. then you can put the album out. But then yeah. by 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 that point, I would think as a because people are buying CDs again, people are buying vinyl, vinyl. people are buying we, cassettes. I'm looking into that right now. <laughs> they actually CD Baby is doing a thing with vinyl. Yes, the, they are. Yeah, three week turnaround, which is pretty amazing for vinyl. Because up, up uh, there, Jack White was saying you have to wait months. Now it's three week turnaround for. I I I I I don't know. I I I don't know if CD Baby can do that. I I don't think it's them doing it. It's a company they're working. No, with. yeah, they have. A, yeah, it's another company they've another partnered company. with. It'd that be is, nice uh, if they can, but you know they'd be ahead of everyone else. I think. Yeah. Uh, Third man, you'd be waiting years to get their stuff. Well, for sure. Yeah. And um, but. We've already done CD singles. We did uh, yeah. we did some CD singles, which is going to have on it. It has um, Soul Declares. There's also a Soul Declares uh, Energy Drink remix, which was done by a guy named Watermark. He used to yep. live here, and he's I think he's in Vancouver. I'm not sure where he is. Is he Ontario? But he he offered to do some remixes. I want to remix your songs. Okay, uh, we'll send you the the stems. But I don't know how much you want for that. He goes, Oh no, I'm doing it for free. I just I really love you guys. Yep. I did. I sang on one or two of his remixes one time, and so. He just is such a great supporter of the band. So he did this remix. He also did one called a um, down tempo mix, which is this slower kind of more almost almost like Moby like kind of ethereal yeah. thing, which is really cool. And then he said, "I'm going to create an intro for your shows. So if you ever just need an intro, which is kind of based on that with no vocal in it." Oh, so I was like, "Hey man, do whatever you want. Just create yeah. a way." Well, we're, you know, so we're going to really. I think we've got the CD, and it's going to have. So it's, the CD single's got uh, Soul Declares, this energy drink mix. There's a radio edit. It's also got the um, uh, the Down Temple mix, and it's got a bonus track, which is Callous Heart, because those are all be on the same project anyway. And um, so those are done. And um, we're, I'm thinking we're probably going to do that as an e as a release as well, like a sort of like a, a monster single, I guess, or and put it up on all the the digital as well so that'll be coming out soon so that'll did be you ever think of doing like when you're releasing these singles and, and putting out a, a cd version of it to to like pull a live track off the uh off the soundboard or anything like that we'd like to record some live stuff i think we've got a few things that'd be kind of cool we could do it even i mean you, you've got the videos like from like yeah. when you were playing in front of nobody like yeah, in the yeah, jam yeah. space or whatever well, but had, i mean we, we had someone shoot some videos of us too we had a couple of fan videos shot from two different people of us doing the Radiohead cover yeah. And also early live performance of Soul Declares. It's not great recording, but the energy of the sh the crowd was great. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm gonna look, we'll have to look into that. I think that'd be kind of cool because I think we're, I think we're a good live band. I think the songs are much bigger live too. I think we, yeah. we always seem to surprise people that we can actually not just pull them off, but we actually kind of exceed them. And then almost after we've been playing for a while, we go, do you know what? I'd like to go back and re-record this. <laughs> it's it's kind of growing. I, like I was looking at. Um, yeah. I, I was looking at like what Apollo Suns does. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not. Oh but, yeah, they're great back. Um, they're, they're phenomenal. We've had them on the show before too. But they're um, when they when they release their EPs, they specifically put out stuff that's not available digitally. Mm -hmm. Like there, there's extra content on there, so it's it's extra live tracks, um, stuff yeah. that's that's never you know intended for digital release because they're really pushing vinyl. They're really pushing CDs. That sort of thing. I think it's always a good idea. So, I mean, if you guys had something off the soundboard that's only available on the CD single for, you know, for the yeah, next track that you idea. guys do, 
like yeah. acoustic version or acoustic versions of songs you know maybe go in yeah 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 like that works too space and just record a decent recording and let steve master it and play around with it yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I just, it's just don't... I I feel like we really need to push like the 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 physical copies of things. Yeah. Like when Todd and I released our album last year, we did the same thing. If you want to go buy the digital copy, go ahead. There's four mm -hmm. songs on there. But if you want to buy the actual physical copy, we had eleven songs on there. And well, it's, let's be honest, know. the sound is better because what we're hearing on like you're getting it off iTunes or you're listening to it on yeah. Spotify. Mm -hmm. It's an MP3. Yeah. And that's why when I've, I've done this, I've got so used to listening to Spotify, and then I put a CD in one day in my vehicle. Oh, like, oh I'm going to listen to this. And it was like, oh, yeah, this is wave audio. It's so yeah. much bigger than – we've kind of just gotten used to this this kind of smushed sound. And yeah. we're, that's why I think mm -hmm. some people are getting into vinyl, too, because we're missing out. Yeah. Just bring up all um, the frequencies on the end. Yeah, and yeah. the dynamics are so – you go, oh, my gosh, why did I – we sacrificed audio for – convenience mm -hmm. i think we have mm -hmm. but i mean i still got i still got my cd collection behind i've got a, a stereo with a cassette player on because i've been buying cassettes lately because there's a few labels in town that they release cassettes and that's all they release so well, i just I know bought, um, you know it's great what is it universal music solutions or whatever does like burns and and does all kinds of they also do merch they do buttons and things too so yeah. they're really good mm -hmm. if you're in a hurry and you need to get cds for a show like in a week they can have your cds in a couple days nice and so but they're it depends on the smaller orders. You only get jewel case. If you get a bigger orders, you get like an actual cardboard, yeah. kind of digi pack or whatever. But I know for the last us, album was that. Like for us, we we've pressed, we've done all our own pressing, all our own recording, all our own mastering, like just everything in house. And I don't know, maybe it doesn't sound awesome, but I mean, we get comments, you know, when people listen on Spotify and stuff, and they're like, sure. oh, you guys did this yourself, and it's like, and there's kind of um. Uh, there's an ownership of it that way. And I, I kind of like that, but I will say like you guys going in the studio, like the studio you're going in, like the sound you guys are getting, like it, it sounds big and it sounds, you know, that's, that's Steve. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he should be a big, don't producer. mess with that. No, but he should be a bigger producer. <laughs> I, I think he's, yeah. I, know, I think it was like, um, Nashville artist, Crystal Shawana did a song and she wasn't happy how it was mixed. So she gave it to him. He remixed it and remastered it. And she released that version. So the Nashville guys weren't cutting it for her. And Steve went, oh, well, yeah. it's because they're doing cookie cutter. And he went, this is how you sound. This yeah. is how he kind of makes you sound like the best version of you. Like I, I've never heard he's worked on everybody, hip hop artists and country artists and folk artists. You'd never hear Steve. You always just hear that artist, but they're kind of like amplified. They're like, you know, enhanced. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're hearing the mm -hmm. best version of that artist. And that's the best. Like Rick Rubin's like that as a producer. You don't. Hear him like I love Daniel Lenoir, but you can hear Daniel Lenoir on YouTube. You can hear Daniel Lenoir on Sneaker Pimps. You can hear him on um, Bob Dylan. You can hear him yeah. on, like all those Robbie Robertson. You can hear him on those projects. It's Brandon definitely. Flowers. Yeah, he did produce Brandon Flowers solo yeah. stuff too. Yeah, but so I mean, I love Steve. If you're looking for a great producer and he's reasonable and he will do the work and he won't release it unless it's good, and he doesn't charge you for every freaking little mix you do. It's just based on the hours it takes. Yeah, he's the king. I mean, we go in with him, and we will record usually three sessions. We get everything down, three or four sessions. We get everything down. Yeah, and then it's all about the mix and the mastering for him. He spends. He'll get back to us after a week. I think I got a mix, and then he'll just kind of tweak it here and there. And it's like, yep, okay, that's where he's. So he does everything in house. Like he does the recording, the mixing, and the mastering. So we don't have to send it off anywhere, and it's ready to go. That's good. Uh, but yeah, that's it's. Uh, I gotta say, there's a really great scene in this city. It's just, there. it's kind of hard. I, I know we, you said we're playing a lot of shows. We're trying to get into more shows. Like we see some of these other artists are getting these great opening slots. And yeah. it's like, who do I need to know to get some mm -hmm. of these gigs? Do we need an agent? And I've talked to some of these bands. Do you have an agent? How'd you get that gig? It's, oh, no. We'll just, no. We just have friends. And it's like, you know, and I understand people don't want to share what, you, what, what they're doing. But it's like, man, we gotta, we're just trying to kick down some doors because we just really need to get mm -hmm. some more high-profile shows. Because I really believe when we play live, we win people over every time. It's just a matter of getting in front of the, you know, in front of the people. Like, sort of like a chef who's got this food that they know people will like, but you got to get it on the plate. Yeah. And, and so yeah, they can very try true. It. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully, um, this year will be the year we get some more doors open and we can kind of get into some of these shows. Um, and um, we've been networking with a lot of cool people, so hopefully that will happen. But it's it's cool. a weird it's a weird thing. It's it's there's a really great scene and there's some really great artists, but there's some, you just can't, there's certain, certain clicks you can't kind of yeah, get that's, into, yeah. you know, and we uh, found that I, too. Like when we were, we were playing, like, we're not, we're not young bucks, Todd and I. So, 
you know, it's like, well, we're not 22 years old. So, you know, I, I think there's certain shows we, you know, maybe we weren't going to get because, you know, because of things like that or, but then a lot of kids lately. So. Well, yeah, but, but you know, but like when we, when we played people are like, Oh shit, these guys actually know what they're doing. And it's like, well, fuck yeah, we do. Like, you'll be doing this for a while, you know? But, I mean, I, I think a lot of it's just, you know, playing and just proving yourselves, you know, and it's not going to be overnight, you know, you know, so just keep going. You guys, you got the good. So. Thanks, man. Thank you. Definitely. Definitely. Well, we, uh, yeah, we just need to get out there and, and show it to people. And uh, I think we're slowly winning people. Like we're getting new. We must like on social media. There's been a real buzz and TikTok has been crazy good for us because yeah, that's, we've been finding these new fans every day and I'll find, I'll get a notification. Someone's using your song, your clip for your song for this or for that. And, so yeah, it's been kind of exciting mm-hmm. to have someone say, "Oh, I, I mean, I'll drop into someone's live. They're doing a live talking about music, and I drop in and it goes, hey, this is that band I was telling you about. You guys, oh, and I follow them. They go, You're following us, and then they play the song, and they're and they're like, like little broadcasters yeah. doing their their live stream of music, and it's going in. They're getting the audio in. It's not like just someone playing in the background. So some of these interviews, it's like these little radio shows, and some of them are syndicated broadcasters who also stream live, so you can kind of tune in. They'll talk to people between the songs. You know, and they go, like, oh, how's he feeling? You're talking over the song. He says, I'm not going over the air. This is just us. You can hear the music. So it's kind of like cool. That's sort of the new, maybe the new broadcasting is, yeah, is mm-hmm. uh, these kind of live streams and, um, and podcasts. This is like, this is the, this is the music journalism. Oh, know, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, grew up listening to Alan Cross, thinking this was the oh, pinnacle yeah. of, you know, music journalism and, yeah. and George Stromvalopoulos, who I got to really get to know. He's been really a great guy. He was in the early days of the band, he was very supportive and he's still, if he's doing a live on Apple Music or whatever, I'll pop in and he'll go, hey, why? I'm sure this is Brian, right? And he'll just start talking to me. And people in the chat are like, who the hell are you talking to? But, you know, he's just a great fan of music and a great supporter of music. And he doesn't have any pretense of, well, you're not, you know, in the in crowd right now. You're not the cool. Oh, no, yeah. You know, the media, the, was it the, the the critical darlings? Was it years ago when bands would get on the cover of Uptown Magazine? is like, go say, oh, I don't want to get in the cover. And I said, why don't you want to get in the cover? Because as soon as you get in the cover, your band breaks up what and then <laughs> there's this kind of like this weird there was this weird yep. kind of like like what are you talking about superstition of i don't know man i just don't know if i want to be on the cover of uptown because every band gets on there and then they break up like, i don't think that's true but it's like there is sort of this weird like we're like sailors you know and we're like ooh, that's a bad that's a bad omen there and it's like why are we so superstitious man it's like like it's like actors with uh, you know saying Macbeth in the theater it's like just relax man it's just rock and roll it's uh, there's nothing going on here no oh, man, it was funny. Anyway, <laughs> but there's some there's some great um, bands in the scene. If you get a chance, check out Moonfield. They're really great. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try those guys. for sure. Yeah, there's some really yeah. great bands. Mm-hmm. Awesome. What where, what's the website? It's whytheband.com. W h y the band.com, and it's got and there's the links to everything there. All our social media. If you go on our YouTube channel, um, we have all our links there too. We have link trees on all our social media stuff. So if you go on YouTube, yeah, everything's cross-linked. I was actually checking out yeah. all the uh, cross-links today. Well, like, oh, well, that's good. Yeah. You guys did good there. Perfect. Yeah, just uh, just hit YouTube. If you go on YouTube, just look up Why the Band, and we'll show up. Or just type in Soul Declares. We're gonna show up at yeah. the top of the thing. So yeah. the song's still getting still buzzing along. So um, yeah, we're really grateful for the response that people have given the song. Yeah, it's all good stuff. All right, we're going to cap it off here. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, stick around after I uh, hit the uh, stop recording button. And uh, thanks for coming on. We really, really Thank appreciate you for uh, having us. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm.